do you want to learn how to edit like this? If the answer is yes, stick around for all the secrets in the video. Yo, what's going on guys? Your boy Glizzy back in with another video and today I'm going to be sharing 6 tips to become a faster editor in Fortnite. Now, recently the creative community has kind of blown up with a bunch of fast and spam editors. So I thought I'd share the tips that I use to improve my own personal speed with you guys. Now when it comes to editing, I don't ever want you guys to get too down on yourself because it's the hardest thing to master mechanical wise when it comes to this game. And there's a lot of factors that go into becoming a fast and good editor. So again, don't get too down on yourself as you won't become the best or fastest overnight. As well as there's a lot of outlying factors out of your control that improve your editing speed such as like your ping and frames and stuff like that so personally I don't have the highest frames or the best ping in the world so I know I'm not gonna be the fastest so you guys just gotta keep that in account when you're being hard on yourself if you even are but with that being said if you guys enjoyed the video today remember to leave a like down below and subscribe for more content if you guys want a chance to be in any of my videos or even play with me go ahead and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at glizzy that's G-L-Y-Z-Z-I -Z I will be talking to you a lot on there and I respond to every single message I get with that being said, let's become a faster editor. Alright guys, when it comes to being a fast editor, there's a lot of things that it boils down to, but I'm going to be talking about the main ones that are important to accomplish this feat that people overlook a lot, and they're actually pretty simple. But starting off, we're going to be talking about our editing binds, because without good binds, you're just going to be hurting yourself down the road, and this one sets you up for success later on. So you just want to have your four main things, your edit, select confirm and reset all on different fingers but if you're using confirm on release you could take one of those away i guess so for me i edit with touchpad select with r2 confirm with triangle and then i reset with l1 so if you see right here i use all different fingers edit with my index finger select with my uh middle finger confirm with my index and then i reset with my middle finger so they're all on different fingers so i don't waste that time going back and forth moving them somewhere where they don't need to be and there's a lot of ways you can do this up you just got to experiment and figure out what is best for you because there is no wrong way as long as they're all on different fingers all right guys now that we got some good binds picked out we can get into the actual tips and tricks to improve our editing speed and before we get into the mechanical stuff with the controller, I have one mental tip for you, and this is super important. You shouldn't overlook it as I'd attribute the majority of my growth and how fast I was able to get better to this one thing right here. And that's kind of overthinking and just really focusing on everything you do with your analog sticks, button press, and movement in general. So in simple terms, just be focused when you're doing this and really like try to nitpick everything you do rather than just mindlessly free building. Now this one's kind of hard to show because a lot of it happens up here and you correcting yourself and telling yourself what to do in your head. But like to make it simple like things you should focus on are like where you're actually moving your crosshair. So like if you're doing a double edit like try to really focus on like keeping it super small right there right. Or like if you're editing down, like really focus on like where you're moving it when you're editing these ramps. So instead of just like kind of throwing your crosshair, like try to really focus and be like, hey, I'm going to move this like from the minimum spot right there, right there. So I'm right into the next edit, you know, and then when I'm right here, instead of just throwing it all the way back here, right, I'll just like really try to keep in mind and focus on making this little move to flip it right there. So it's like just little things like that. And when you mess up, when you focus like this and you mess up, it'll help you like figure out what you're doing wrong. Like right there, I wasn't really focused, so I messed up. So I couldn't really tell you what I actually did wrong there. But if I was focused, I'd probably know like right there I was focused. And I realized I pressed my confirm button too much or too early before I pressed my select. These little things will slow you down and maybe make you slower at the beginning. But you just got to be prepared to get worse before you get better when it comes to a lot of things. Alright, now that we got those other things out of the way, we can get into the actual mechanical tips and tricks involving the controller right here to improve your editing speed. Now, this first one I'm going to give you right here, I really haven't heard anyone talk about, and this is so important, especially when it comes to single tile edits on controller, and that's debounce time. So if you don't know what debounce time, it's just how long it takes the button to go all the way down and come back up. So if you notice, R2 and L2 have a really big debounce time because the buttons are longer compared to your face buttons in L1 and R1. And the way this affects editing is it takes forever. If you press this R2 button all the way down, right, you have to wait 
for it to come back up before you could start it again so in hindsight that really slows down your time so if you saw that that's me waiting the whole time for it to come back up and pushing r2 all the way down but if you are able to focus on your debounce time if you look at this look how little i have to press this button to select it you ready you saw that it, it barely even moved it's hardly even moving that's all you really have to do to select your edit and that goes with l2 too if you select with that or reset or confirm with that so you really want to master that little oh, subtle tap almost it's like a tap rather than a push so instead of holding it and pushing it all the way down where you have to push it down it starts here push down to here and come back up there it really only has to do that right there just a little movement and this will improve your editing speed so much and that's why I'm able to double edit so fast on a high pin because it's almost like a mouse click if you master the debounce time with it. Now, if you don't want to master the debounce time, there's a couple alternatives and that's either using trigger stops, which there are tons of videos out there on how to make homemade trigger stops or you can buy a more expensive controller if that's your thing. But if you don't want to do either of those, I used to talk about this a lot and used to do it myself and that's use R1 to select your edit because if you notice R1 is almost like the debounce time itself because it's like a shorter button so you don't have to wait that time. So if you want to use R1 to select that's an easy way to bypass it and improve your editing speed because you have less debounce time. Alright guys so the next tip we're going to talk about is our button presses and by this I mean being able to press our edit select and confirm all at the same exact time because when you see a lot of people edit they'll actually wait for the colors pop up so they'll edit they'll wait for the blue they'll select they'll wait for the grid and they'll confirm now it won't really be that slow it'll probably look something more like this right and then when they reset like that but if you see me do it it's almost instant between the two and those are editing and resetting and that's because i'm able to press all my buttons at the same time both ways and that's why we set up our bind so we had all four of them on separate fingers and this is super important because a lot of people talk about a uh, scroll wheel reset being really good but if you have your buttons set up separately you can press them all at the same time and it's like scroll wheel reset so here's me doing it on controller right versus a uh, scroll wheel right so if I edit that up scroll wheel it looks almost the exact same the only difference is, is there's maybe a little glitch there when it comes to the uh, mouse wheel. But again, there's that one with the mouse, and then there's me on controller. That one was a little laggy. Controller, mouse. So you see, they look almost the exact same. And the way I'm able to do this is you just got to find the timing to be able to press all of them at the same time. And to work up to being able to get that right, I want you to practice hitting edit and select at the same time so it comes up with the tile selected there and I want you to confirm that and then do the same thing with your reset hit edit and reset at the same time and confirm it and then just do that a couple times until you get used to it and then once you get that down I want you to hit the edit button I want to hit you want you to do select confirm and I want you to hit the edit button and then do reset confirm and just work on that until you're able to get it to a consistent speed where you could just do it consistently and consistently and have that timing down. This tip right here we're going to be talking about our left stick. That's right we don't want to just edit with the right one we want to use the left and right one in conjunction with one another and that's because controller movement is so good like when people talk about 360 movement and the pros complaining about it is because it's truly overpowered especially when it comes to editing and that's because you could actually give yourself more time to hit the edits and make them a lot easier with better angles and in simple terms instead of having to come up here we'll start with a double edit so for a double edit right if you're over here and you want to come out this side most of the time if you're not utilizing your movement you're going to come at this diagonal angle and be at a weird angle and stuck for your next set of moves making them a lot harder that's where if you used your movement right you could actually round it out and come here to hit it right so again round it out and you see how much more time that leaves you with and a better angle which allows you to hit your edit sooner and get set up for these or then again I can round this movement out to come over here as opposed to having to have a weird angle 
So it comes down to even the simplest of things, right? Compared to, you could even, and it goes all the way into difficult stuff with insane retakes. So here with the cone, right? I could come here. If I use my sideways run, look at where I'm at now. Super easy. But if I don't do that, I'm like misplacing stuff and I'm stuck up here super close with tight edits and I might not even be able to squeeze a triple edit in there. So if you utilize your movement, it's just, it's so good. It's so good. All right, I got one last tip for you guys before I go, and that's just really focus on your consistency rather than speed. Speed will come over time, but if you have a foundation of consistency, the speed will come a lot faster. Because what good is it if you could do some insane edits only one time, as if where you could do something maybe a slightly less impressive, but multiple times. So again, just for basic purposes, not going anything crazy. If this is as fast as you could go, don't worry about it. You'll get faster. Just start here. Don't sit here and spam it because even I spam it as fast as I can and I mess up, right? I mess up a lot and it's not doing anything. It doesn't look good. So again, just take your time, build up that consistency and speed will come. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the video today. I hope you enjoyed the six tips that I shared with you and you're able to utilize them in your practice to become a faster editor. Because like I said, this is super important. Having good edits separates you from a good player to a great player. But also, this is very hard and one of the hardest mechanics to improve upon. So don't get too down on yourself if you're struggling. It will come over time. Just use these tips each and every day when you hop on to practice. With that being said, if you have anything else or any topics you want me to cover, leave them in the comment section down below. As always, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.